Hi everyone, this is Lynn Larson, your volunteer state director for SoCal Odyssey the Mind. And the purpose of this video is to give you some very important information about our state tournament. Our state tournament is going to be in person this year, but we have some differences for how our state tournaments normally are held. So please pay very close attention to this information so that your team can have the best experience possible at our state tournament. It is going to be held April 2nd, 2022 at Moreno Valley High School. It's the first time we've had our state tournament here. We were going to have it there in 2020 and then the world kind of tips upside down and we pivoted to virtual very quickly. So we're very excited to host our very first state tournament at Moreno Valley High School. The address is 23300 Cottonwood Avenue in Moreno Valley. And I'm going to show you a map of the campus a little bit later so you can orient yourself. Like I mentioned, April 2nd, 2022 at Moreno Valley High School. We will be setting up the tournament that morning. So performance times should begin around 8.30 and they will be running later into the afternoon because we are doing setup that morning. Um, the schedule, we hope to have the schedule out two weeks in advance, but it may be a little bit later than that. And like I mentioned, the state tournament will be a little bit different due to the pandemic. It's super important that you register your team for the state tournament. Even though all of our teams are advancing from the regional showcase to the state tournament, that doesn't mean that your team is registered for the state tournament. So you as the coach must go online and register your team for the state tournament. So go back to odysseyofthemind.com where you registered for the regional showcase, log into your member area and register for the state tournament. And this has to be done by the end of the day on March 18th. Like I mentioned, all teams from the regional showcase are advancing to state, but you do have to register your team. This does not happen automatically. So please go in and take care of that and don't make us have to chase after you to see if you're coming to the state tournament or not. Even though we are going to have some COVID protocols in place, which I'm going to explain in a moment, your team still does need to provide a volunteer. We can't run this tournament, especially an in-person tournament without our volunteers. And so your team must provide a volunteer and it will be for a two hour time slot, just like in the past. Please wait to have your volunteers sign up until the schedule has been released. So your volunteer can select a time that doesn't conflict with your team's performance. And your volunteer must be one of the adults cleared to be on campus with the team. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And like I mentioned, all volunteers are critical. Please take this assignment seriously. Don't make us chase after you to get your volunteer. It just takes a lot of time. We're all volunteers ourselves. So please just take care of this detail. Um, if your volunteer can't end up fulfilling their responsibility, it's your responsibility as a coach to find somebody else who can. And we're gonna have a sign up genius just like in the past. So it's super easy to go online. They choose um, a time slot that works for them, a job that they'd like to do and click submit. So very, very easy. We'll have that link posted on our website. All right, here's our COVID protocols. And these have been discussed at great length at the state at the state board level, um, keeping in mind the protocols that are in place for all of our school districts. We wanna make sure that all of our teams can compete at this tournament. And so while these may be more stringent than what's going on in your particular district, we are going with the strictest district guidelines again, so all of our teams can participate in our state tournament. So all adults, coaches, parents, guardians, judges, officials must be fully vaccinated and bring proof of vaccination to the tournament. All participants must fill out and submit a health screening form before being allowed on campus. We'll provide that form ahead of time. Once the form is approved, the person must wear the provided colored wristband. So everyone's gonna be given a brightly colored wristband and that's our way of knowing that everyone's gone through the health screening. Everyone on campus must wear a tight fitting mask at all times unless eating or drinking. If you don't come to the tournament with a mask, we will provide one for you. Teams must remain socially distanced throughout their day or throughout their time on campus and venues will be cleaned and aired out between performances. Uh, we will have souvenir sales and they will have uh, waiting areas designated that are socially distanced. Please adhere to those. Um, and anyone warned and not following these procedures may incur an unsportsmanlike penalty for their team. So we find that the kids do great with this, but sometimes the adults not so much. So please encourage your parents, your guardians, your coaches to behave themselves. Don't make us um, Think about giving your team an unsportsmanlike penalty just because you're not following these basic COVID protocols that we've been living under for the past two years. 
All right, in terms of adults on campus, we're really trying to limit the number of people who are on campus at one time. So because of that, we're having only two coaches, team members, and one adult per team member um, to be on campus with each team. Um, and the one adult per team member besides the coaches, that's all who will be allowed in the performance venue for each performance. The adults allowed on campus for the team can assist with moving props, scenery, costumes, and helping them move things to and from the performance venue, just like always. Teams will be given a packet for their accompanying adults, which must be presented at the performance venue for entrance. No ticket, no going in. And those tickets will be available in your coach packet when you check in. All right, so how to plan your day. This is a different tournament. You're not gonna be able to just show up in the morning, stay all day and go home. Unfortunately, maybe we can do that again next year. That's what we're hoping. So this is what I recommend. So your coach, the coach of the team, one coach will check in at their assigned time. You will be given an arrival time. At that time, you'll go through our health screening, get your wristband, go to the coach check-in table, which will be right inside the main gate. You'll get your coach packet, your, which will have your spontaneous check-in ticket and your performance venue tickets and some other important information. Immediately after that, you will go to the paperwork check station and you will have your team's paperwork checked by um, two trained officials. So please come to that check-in with your team's paperwork ready to be checked. Um, so after that, the team and accompanying adults need to go through our health screening at the main entrance and then they can enter the campus with their prop scenery and costumes. Then your team has time to prepare and prepare for, and then you compete either long-term or spontaneous, depending on what's ever scheduled first. And this is a huge campus. There's lots of covered areas, many areas for teams to set up and kind of, you know, have an area to prepare and remain socially distanced from one another. Please plan on very limited time in the bathrooms. This is not going to be a time or a place where kids can hang out. So it'd be great if kids could come to the performance venue with their costumes on. Sometimes they're quite elaborate, so we know that's not possible, but really try to limit the time in the restrooms. In between your long-term and spontaneous time, teams can visit the souvenir stand, order a custom t-shirt, um, hang out and relax. This, this time is going to be limited, probably one to two hours at most. Then your team will compete either long-term or, sp or spontaneous, and then immediately after that, team, uh, the team gathers their things and leaves the campus. Teams and adults can stop by the souvenir stand and the t-shirt vendor before leaving campus. Unfortunately, we're not going to be allowing teams to view other team performances this year. Uh, we just really need to limit the time that teams are on campus and limit the number of people that are in the performance venues at one time. In terms of the performance venues, a map of these will be posted on our state website. Room numbers, specific room numbers will be given to you in your coach packet. Um, and just remember, you cannot check your team into spontaneous without the ticket in your coach packet. And the pictures that you see here on the slideshow are our pin sets this year. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit as well. So pins and souvenirs. You can buy a state tournament souvenir t-shirt made to order with your choice of different designs and your team member names on the back on our um, at the tournament site in the main quad area. Odyssey souvenirs and SoCal OM World Finals pins will also be for sale. These are our two main ways that we um, raise funds for the organization. So we really appreciate um, you supporting these two efforts. You can also order pins online already at socalodyssey.org slash store. The ordering coupon is 22 flavor exclamation points. So don't forget that. Sales of our 2022 World Finals pins will also be available on the main quad area of the high school during the tournament. You can also buy a raffle ticket to support our high school scholarships and have a chance to win a World Finals pin towel full of pins. And we have a couple of years of those. So there's a bigger opportunity for you to win a pin towel this year. They're pretty cool. All right, dining options. Due to COVID protocols, we will not be selling food on campus this year. All of our judges will be getting individual box lunches and sealed snacks, but we won't have any food trucks on campus this year. However, right in the area around the high school, there are many fast food and sit down restaurant options within a 10 minute drive from the high school campus. There's a huge shopping area very close to this campus. And so um, you won't, there's just a lot of different restaurants to choose from. 
you can bring coolers onto campus, but no grills or cooking equipment will be allowed on campus or in the parking lot, but obviously bring snacks and water drinks um, so that your team can um, be fed and have things to drink during their time on campus. In terms of parking and unloading and loading, parking will be enforced in all of our parking lots. Teams will only be allowed to load and unload all of their stuff in the covered student lot. And I'm gonna show you where that is um, on a map in a moment. There is no long-term parking in any loading and unloading zones. All trailers and RVs must be parked at the far back of the student parking lot. Please don't take up spots close to the, um, close to the school. We will have an area designated for officials parking. They will be parking in the staff lot, so there will be no team parking in the staff parking spots. There is a half circle drive in front of the school. Teams will not be allowed to drive through that half circle. Um, that is only for our state officials and um, it can get very congested in there. So no teams will be allowed to drop off in that half circle um, drive. The student parking lot is very close to the school. So it's, it's not a far walk at all. All coaches must check in only at their signed check-in time. Please don't try to check in early. Um, we'll have a very detailed schedule where we're trying to limit the number of people on campus. So please don't make it difficult by arriving early. And again, remember to bring your team's paperwork as this will be checked immediately after you check in. So here's a map of Moreno Valley High School. Again, 23300 on Cottonwood Avenue in Moreno Valley. Um, again, specific room numbers will be given to you when you check in. And so um, over off to the right here is the covered parking lot. This is an older Google Maps, but all of this lot is completely finished now and it has solar panels throughout it. So pretty much everybody will be, have, uh, will be able to have a covered parking spot for our event. So this is where all teams must park. Again, there's this half circle drive right in front of the building. Um, no teams will be allowed to pull into there at all. It, again, it's a very short walk from the student parking lot to the main gate. So we want all teams to be parking in the student parking lot. You walk down this um, short walkway here and this red arrow here, this is where all participants must enter. And this is where you will turn in your health screening form, um, your proof of vaccination, show your proof of vaccination, and then you'll get that colored wristband. Once you walk inside through this main gate, immediately to your right will be the coach check-in area. And that's where you will get your coach packet. And then right next to that will be your paperwork check. So again, please bring your paperwork with you when you pick up your coach packet. In this main quad area here is where we will have our souvenir stand and the custom t-shirt vendor will be set up as well. So that's very convenient. Um, off to the right to a lunch table area is where the P1 venues will be. P3 will be in the M and N buildings right here. P2 will be over in the J wing over here. P5 will be in the lecture hall and in this building here. And then P4 will be um, up at the top of the campus here. Off to this side of the campus to the left is where our spontaneous will be taking place. This will happen in the portables that are located back here. And the spontaneous check-in area will be um, set up right in front of these portables right around here. Again, you will be provided a student, uh, a campus map and specific room numbers for your performance venues when you arrive on campus. In terms of awards this year, we are not gonna have on-campus awards, unfortunately. I know that's my favorite part of the day. There's so much energy, kids are so excited. Um, they've had an awesome day, but unfortunately, again, just to keep everyone healthy and safe, we're going to do virtual awards this year. We will hold our virtual awards ceremony on April 3 at 6 p.m. Pacific time via Zoom and Facebook Live, and we'll have more details about how to connect into this um, provided to you via email on our social media and on our website. We would love to feature a photo of your team um, during our um, pre-event dance party. So please send us a picture of your team at photos at socalodyssey.org. Please just send one picture. Um, teams placing first, second, and third will need to coordinate pickup of their medals and state champion shirts with their regional director. So um, we don't have the budget to mail all of these out to you. And so we are going to get these to your regional director and they will be sending out a message about how to pick that up from them. Teams placing first, second, or third for their long-term problem in division are advancing to world finals this year. Usually it's just first and second, but the national office is inviting first, second, and third place teams 
in each problem and division to go to world finals. We are giving awards for first place and spontaneous. So any teams placing first for spontaneous who don't place first, second, or third for long-term will have their spontaneous medals mailed to their coach. As usual for our world finals teams, we'll have a mandatory online meeting to talk about all things world finals. Um, this usually lasts an hour and a half or so. We will do this over Zoom, and this is going to be held April 6th at 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, and again, we'll go over lots and lots of details about World Finals. Coaches with teams advancing to World Finals will see, receive an email with webinar registration information for that event. And again, all teams who place first, second, or third in their problem and division are invited to World Finals, including ties. Um, as well as any team or individual receiving a Renatra Fusco award. So if someone on your team receives a Renatra, then the whole team is invited to world finals. All right, so that's all of the important information um, we have for you about the state tournament. Please keep on top of emails and other messages that are going out. Like us on Facebook, we keep stuff updated on our social media pages. Keep up to date on our SoCalOdyssey.org website. That's updated regularly as well. Um, SoCal Odyssey Instagram isn't updated quite as often as our SoCal Odyssey Facebook page, um, but we do post some things there. Please remember your team must have someone sign up for their volunteer um, for a two hour slot. Um, again, we'll send that sign up genius link for you all. Um, we'll also have updated information in that Coach Creative Journey Tools folder. Um, if you go to socalodyssey.org um, and go to the coach tab, there's a link to the coach creative journey tools, and we keep all that information up to date as well. Obviously, you can always email me, socaldirector at socalodyssey.org. We also need to make sure that as many judges from our regional showcase advance to the state tournament as well. We know quite a few um, were able to participate because it was virtual. But again, if we don't have enough judges for our tournament, your team is not going to be evaluated um, as well. So please check with your judge and um, have them let their state problem captain know if they are available to judge for state. All right, um, we're super excited to have everybody back in person. It's not um, you know, as we usually have things, but we're really happy to have our teams back in person this year. We appreciate you working with us um, to have a health, healthy and safe tournament this year. If you have any questions, please reach out. We look forward to seeing you on April 2nd. Thank you.